everybody, welcome out here to today's video. In today's video, we will be announcing the schedule lineup and announcement out here for the 2025 Monster Jam season for my diecast tour. And just the three or I think it was nearly three or four days ago, we just finished up our final show of the 2024 season in East Rutherford, New Jersey at MetLife Stadium. And now it is time to take a look at what this year will bring and what the schedule will be for this year's, um, for this coming up year's Monster Jam events that I will be doing for my diecast tour. First up, we have, um, let's do a quick recap of what happened in 2024 um, with our five series champions that we crowned this year. As on Arena Championship Series East, for the third year in a row, we had Zach Garner in Wildside take home the win on that tour. Zach had a strong performance all season long that year, and competing against tough competitors like, uh, you know, Armando Castro, Cody Saussier, and Kristen Anderson. It was a close, it was a close battle, especially towards the end between him and. Dragon, who had to get some fill-ins towards the end of the season with drivers like Joe Dennis and Tony Oaks. And uh, he was able to come out on top. He took advantage of the fill-ins and was able to come out on top on Arena Championship Series East, winning his third tour in a row. Next up on, uh, on Arena Championship Series West, Matt Cody would clinch the series championship in Gravedigger. As uh, earlier on in the season, Brandon Vincent would drive from, I believe, Salt Lake City to Oklahoma City. Um, he would drive for all those shows, but then after that, he ended up leaving because of the some of the stuff that he had with his construction company. And he just could not make it back out for the rest of the year and would have to retire to focus more on his construction company. So Matt Cody would end up coming in and filling in. For Brandon Vincent, starting in uh, starting in Wichita, Kansas, and would fill in all the way to the end of the season in Green Bay, Wisconsin. He'd bring home the series championship, also with some help of uh, Cody Saussier and Tyler Meninga, who filled in for Matt Cody because Matt Cody was busy and could not make it to the Fresno and Lincoln shows. So Tyler would fill in for Fresno, and then... Cody would fill in for Lincoln, so, you know, but, but then Matt did all the other shows from Wichita all the way to Green Bay, did most of the shows in that period of time, so, you know, great job for Matt Cody getting his first ever series championship out here, although he kind of did need some assistance out here, you know, he was still happy he got, he got to bring home the win and get himself an automatic invite into World Finals. Next up on Stadium Championship Series West, we would see Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger take the win out here. This was a really tight and competitive tour this year on, a, on Stadium Tour West. It was stacked on that tour from top to bottom. But Ryan Anderson would pull out the series win. And last year, you know, last year Ryan Anderson felt like as if he may have gotten unfairly robbed of that series championship because of all the... um. Arena events that Tyler Meninga and Gravedigger did, but Ryan Anderson did not. So, kind of felt like he was maybe a bit robbed out here of that series championship as he'd end up finishing in fourth place on that tour. As he not only finished behind Gravedigger, but he also fell, fell behind in, um, to El Toro Loco and Lucas Stabilizer with Cynthia Gauthier. So, you know, Ryan Anderson he came out this year. All 12 trucks competing in all events. There were no arena events that had shorter lineups or not featuring all 12 trucks. So, Ryan Anderson was able to come into the year. He burned it down on all season long, and he just had a great consistent performance, and he was able to bring home the series championship out here on Stadium Tour West. Next up, we've got Weston Anderson in Gravedigger. Uh, as he would bring home his third series championship in a row this year on Arena Championship Series Central. As Weston just burned it down all season long. And he held the series lead throughout the entirety of the tour. Like he had it all the way from the beginning of January in Nashville. All the way to the end of the year in 
in the end of the season, South Haven, Mississippi. So, you know, Weston, he had a great performance. He was constantly winning. He was super dominant in racing skills and freestyle. He was just so dominant in those competitions. And he also um, he also did get some wins and a lot of wins in uh, Sky Wheelies as well. So it was an overall pretty good season for Weston Anderson. He won very, he won I think almost I think he won every single skills competition on that tour except for maybe one. I think Brandon Talechka may have somehow gotten a win in there. And then uh, I think he won every racing competition, but a few as I know: Frank Krimmel, Brandon Mahan, Jamie Sullivan, and uh, Brandon Talechka would all pull and take wins from him. But besides that, it was really dominant and great season. From Weston Anderson and Grave Digger, as he would walk away with that championship. It was probably one of his best performances ever on a tour. And as you know, he kept the lead the whole time during the tour. Unlike in 2023, in 2023, he kind of caught up midway through the season where he would take the lead and run away with the tour um, t towards the end. And then in 2022, he didn't really get the lead in the points until the last two stops where he was able to win the championship. So, you know, great job out here for Weston Anderson as he will walk as he would um as he would walk away with his third series um championship in a row. And then last up getting his second stadium tour win out here and his second stadium tour win in a row on Stadium Tour East would be Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger. Tyler Meninga who had been competing mostly on the West Coast on West Coast tours over the past two years, would switch over this year to an East Coast tour, and he'd get the chance to compete with a lot of different competitors he had never competed with before, and he had a really just awesome and fantastic season. There was no controversy surrounding the win he got. He won it fair and square, where this series championship out here on Stadium Tour East. He was dominant throughout the whole tour. You know, maybe you know he may have had some um, hard times in the beginning. Where it was a back and forth lead in overall event championships and in the point standings between him and Tom Mentz. But after Tom Mentz got injured in uh, in early February, Tyler just ran away with the tour, or and he would just do be, just do really well and just dominate on it against some really tough competition like Tristan England, Todd LaDuke, Bryce Kenny, and uh, Tyler just had an awesome performance lead down many just great freestyle runs and just had a great performance throughout and he would even win the stadium freestyle of the year from his freestyle run from Tampa show two so it was just overall a really great season for Tyler Meninga as he brought home his series championship win for the second year in a row that is it with tour champions out here from 2024 and then earlier on uh, I guess I put the wrong date on here um this is actually supposed to be June 8th 2024 for Monster Jam World Finals 25 in Inglewood, California at SoFi Stadium. As this year we celebrated our 25th um, annual Monster Jam World Finals out here in a, in Inglewood, California at SoFi Stadium. It's the first time the league ever did this. Uh, my league did this stadium out here. And this is our very first time coming there. And then our first time we, we got to do the event there. It was for World Finals. So... It was definitely very, very special, and it was a very big event out here. And it was just a really great weekend of action, and, and we just had a lot of fun during that event in that weekend. So let's go ahead and take a look out here at some of the results from that weekend, as Brandon Mahan in Scooby-Doo would win the JCB World Racing Championship, as and that was a very, very unexpected moment out here, as Brandon Mahan, uh, you know, she went out there, Aaron, she was just very fast and consistent on that track all night long out here. And, you know, she had to go up against some tough competitors and make some upsets, including against Cody Saussier in Dragon, who is somebody who's been known to be fast. And then she ended up having to go all the way to the, she made it all the way to the final round to face off against Zach Garner in Wildside, who had been also been very fast all that night. And, um... You know, he was, and he was looking to try to almost, and we thought he was possibly going to get his first world, world racing championship. But, you know, he ended up having some truck problems um, coming around one of the corners in racing. And his truck would shut off after one of the jumps. And line for Brandon Mahon to cross the finish line and get the world racing championship win. 
this is definitely huge and significant as this is the first time we've seen a female get a uh, a world finals racing championship win in my diecast league ever since 2018 when rosalie raymer and wildflower won the world racing championship back in 2018 so this was definitely really huge for her and this was also brandon mahon's first world finals back ever since 2022 as she missed last year's world finals due to her having her um, her first child, and she took maternity leave during the first quarter, and so during most, in fact, she took maternity leave for all of that year in 2024 and 2023, and then she came back out of 2024, and this is her first stadium event ever since um, Jacksonville for the Tribute to the Lost show back in mid-July of 2022, and she killed it out there in racing and would bring home that win, so that was just an awesome job for Brandon Mahan. And then in freestyle, we'd see Matt Cody and Gravedigger bring home that win in freestyle as that was a really awesome moment out here for, for Matt Cody. He had a really, really great run out here. He had great momentum, big air, lots of saves, two backflips, and it was easily the best run of the night and easily deserved to take the win out here. We didn't know what was going to happen with freestyle this year as, um, you know, and who was going to get the win. As Jim Kohler had gotten an early lead very early on and then runs like Nick Pegley, Rulo, and Todd LaDuke would come out. And they just could not get the lead after having just absolute just great runs. And so we didn't know because Jim had lots of saves and the judges were definitely looking for those saves. And then, uh, and then you know, uh, Matt Cody came out there. He had all those saves. If it weren't for all the saves he had... He probably would not have won the freestyle competition. And so, you know, due to all the saves he had, he was able to get that win in freestyle and walk away with that World Freestyle Championship, which is such a huge moment for him. You know, he didn't even think he was going to compete at the World Finals this year due to the, um, their, him not scheduled to compete in quarter one. And then he got called in to drive for Arena Series West. He took the spot for Brandon Vinson. He carried, he carried Brandon, he, he, got, he was able to like pick, up, pick up where Brandon Vincent left off and was able to take his, um, m make it all the way to get the series championship and then get an invite to come out here to World Finals where he would just throw down and just do awesome. So great job just out here for Matt Cody and Gravedigger on, on, this, on this win. This has been a dream of his to win a world championship and it's also been a dream of his to drive Gravedigger. So, you know, that's just, this is, this, it was just almost like, this is definitely his highlight of his career so far here in Monster Jam and to get that win. And he's really excited to hope to go back, hope to go, hope to go to World Finals next year to defend his championship. And Brianna Mahan is open, also hoping to go back to World Finals next year to defend her championship. Next up, we have our Monster Jam Superstar Challenge, which happened on October 5th, which was Team Gold versus Team Overcast. This year, we rebranded from it being the All-Star Challenge to now the Superstar Challenge that we did. And it was Team Gold versus Team Overcast. So it was definitely going to be very interesting to see how it would play out. And, um, you know, and we think in the event, it went out, it went pretty good out here with the rebranding. This is our first time bringing it back to Steel Titans ever since 2020, uh, 2022. 2022 and this was our first time doing it on steel titans 2 that game is the other ones we had done on the monster steel titans game on steel titans 1 so it was definitely very nice to get to come out here and do another superstar challenge out here with team gold versus team overcast out here probably almost like a parody of, of neon versus nitro out here from the real life from the real life series and it was a really good event and the results go as followed as Cody Saussier and Dragon would take home the racing competition win. As Cody Saussier, he's just been known to be fast in racing. And he was fast all night long in racing. And he was able to make it to the final round to face off against Adam Anderson and Gravedigger Gold. And he was able to get the win, which was a very crucial win for Team, Nitro, for team Overcast. As most of the Team Overcast drivers had lost in round one. So this was a very crucial win. For Cody, so that way his team can get some points on the board. And then in the best trick competition, Tyler Meninga and Gravedigger Overcast would take the win. Tyler Meninga had a very great run at the Superstar Challenge in best trick in the best trick competition. He ended up trying to do at first a nose pick backflip, but it just did not go out to plan. 
Then he went for a second hit. He went for a moonwalk, and he tried to, um, he, you know, he got into a bit of combos as he got a wheelie combo, and then he comboed it back into a stoppy. He walked it all the way down to the other kind of like pod that they had, pod that they had at the other side of the track, and he tried to go for it. He tried to go for the moonwalk into a backflip combo, and he was able to slightly nail it. Not as clean from what we'd see um, in freestyle from Armando Castro in El Toro Loco. Oh, and uh, he did, you know, it was a really good move, move, and uh, he was able to get the win in the best trick competition and uh, help get some more crucial points out there for Team Nitro. And then in freestyle, Cody Sosia and Dragon would get the win as Cody had a really great run, very consistent, big air throughout. I think he nailed, I think, one or two backflips, and he just had an overall, just a really great run, great momentum, great air. Some technical moves and some a backflip, and it was just a really great run from Cody as he would bring home uh, the freestyle, the freestyle championship out here in the Superstar Challenge. And then next up, we'd have uh, we'd see for our team winner would be Team Gold, despite none of the drivers on Team Gold um, actually winning any competitions, they would still get the win. With an absolutely with a with a you know great the performance that they have was great and they're very consistent in their performance at this event. Camden Murphy placed high in a lot of the competitions. Adam Anderson also did pretty well and consistent in the racing and freestyle comp and racing and best trick competitions. And it was overall a pretty great night for team for Team Gold. You know they were able to get a lot of their trucks in the round two, which definitely helped out in points and. They were able to bring home that win out there for the team. So, great job out for Team Gold on getting the win. And then, for our, M for our overall event championship winner, and your MVP, your most valuable player, or in this case, driver, would go to Camden Murphy and Bakugan Dragonoid after his incredible, um, consistent performance that he had at the Superstar Challenge. He did really good in Bakugan Dragonoid. He was, he was finishing very consistent. He, he made it, I think, to the semifinals, I believe, in racing. He's finished near the top in best trick, and then uh, and then in uh, and then in freestyle, he finished in second place to Cody. So he was definitely the most valuable driver on that team, and he got the most points out of all 16 drivers that competed, which would get him the overall event championship. Alrighty, everybody, it's now time to take a look out here at our schedules and the lineups for all of our tours for next year. First up, let's take a look out here at Arena Championship Series West. As the lineup will feature Weston Anderson and Gravedigger, Ashley Sanford and Megalodon, Cody Saussier and Dragon, Brandon Mahan and Scooby-Doo, Berto Trevino and Monster Mutt Rottweiler, Alex Barden and Earthshaker, and Devin Winfield and Velociraptor, and Tim Hall Jr. in Jurassic Attack. To go down the list out here is we have um, quite some big things on this tour. As we have both your defending Arena Series Central Champion and your defending World Finals Racing Champion. On this tour, you know, Weston Anderson out here making his um, fourth time out here on the Championship Series. He's won all three of his Championship Series that he's been on so far. So he's hoping to get another one out here, this time on the West Coast out here, before he's um, competed on Arena Series East and on Arena Series Central. But this is his first time doing Arena Series West, so you know, Weston Anderson is going to get a chance to go to a lot of West Coast Arena stops that he usually doesn't do. Ooh, so, you know, this did, so that'll definitely be fun out here for Weston Anderson. Weston's only done a, a select few... Um, in fact, I believe he's only done two West Coast shows on my Diecast League um, ever since he's been competing. He's only done, uh, he did uh, in 2022, he did Salinas, California for, um, for the second last stop on Arena Series East. Then he did, uh, um, last year he did Glendale, Arizona for the, uh, for the Superstar, for the All for Marvel vs. DC All-Star Challenge. And then he did... This year, the World Finals out there on the West Coast for this year's Monster Jam World Finals. So, you know, Weston Anderson, he's ready. He's going to go out here and he's ready to burn it down and tear it up out here on the West Coast. There's a lot of Steel Titan stops on here, which provide and some pool table stops 
out on here, which will provide for some massive floors for Weston Anderson to just send it on. And so we're just so we're really excited to see how he does on that. Weston's been known to do good on the bigger tracks. So this year at World Finals, he ended up finishing in second place in freestyle this year. And he also was the fastest qualifier at World Finals this year. So, you know, he's ready for some of these bigger floors. And he's ready to just go big and tear it up for all the Monster Jam fans. Next up, we've got Ashley Stanford in Megalodon. Ashley Stanford, for the third year in a row, is now competing on Arena Championship Series West. And, you know, she's really excited to revisit some of those West Coast stops she's been known to be hitting um, now for quite a few years. So, you know, she's excited to return to them. Each year, she's just been getting better and better. And, you know, she's ready to come out here and just kill it and just do really great out here for, for all the fans. And she's just ready to go big and send it. She loves these bigger floors where she can just air it out and just go big. Next up, we've got Cody Saucier in Dragon. Cody Saucier has been doing more shows on the eastern coast of the United States out here over these past couple of years. But now he's getting a chance to come out here and drive on a West Coast tour. He's really excited about that. He loves the bigger floors. We've seen him just do really well on those. He can just burn it down in freestyle. And he can just, just go absolutely just mad fast in racing. So, you know, we're really excited to see what Cody Saucier is going to have in store for us. Next year, so he's definitely going to try to pose a threat to Weston Anderson and Gravedigger. And he's also really hoping for some revenge out here on Weston as uh, Cody was able to win. As Cody won the, uh, almost won the series when Weston made his uh, rookie season back in 2022. Cody almost won that tour on Arena Series uh, East. But he just came up short in the last two stops line for Weston Anderson to get the tour win. So, Cody's looking to come out here with them with a vengeance, and he's hoping to try to get the win and defeat Weston Anderson and walk out as a series champion. We've got our defending world racing champion, Brandon Mahan and Scooby Doo, back out here on this, back out here on Arena Series West. Um, you know, she's been more only doing the stops on the East Coast throughout these past couple of seasons when she's been competing on tours. So, we're really excited to see what she's got for us come now competing on the west coast here of the United States, and uh, we can't wait to see what, what she's going to have in store for us out here on the track. She's a defending world racing champion, so she's ready to absolutely just kill it out here on these bigger tracks, and she's ready to just go big and send it out here. We've got Berto Trevino out here in his second season out here in Monster Jam, making his return to Monster Mart Rottweiler. He's hoping to have a better season than last year, and he's hoping to step up his game and make some improvements from last year. And we just can't wait to see what he has in store for us on the track. We've got Alex Barden, who's taking a move from driving for Team Monster Trucks Unlimited with Stone Crusher and Hooked, to now moving out here to drive out here for Team Throttle Monster, driving Earthshaker out here. We cannot wait to see how he's going to perform on this tour, on this West Coast tour. And last year, he was mainly stuck in those tiny Monster Dirt Arena events all season long. But now he's hoping to come out here this now he's coming out here this year and he's ready to just tear it up out here on a larger on some larger floors on the Steel Titans shows and on the pool table shows as he's ready to go big out there on some of those big tracks. He's done to some independent shows um this year this year and with some of those bigger speedway tracks uh, during the quarter two. So, you know, we're ready to see what Alex Barton has in store for us out here on some of these bigger arena tracks out here. We got Devin Winfield in Velociraptor. Also, going to have a bit of a better season than he had last year. And you know, Devin, you know, is returning some West Coast stops. He's had some great luck at, like that he had at last year, especially where he got his first overall event championship at last year when he did so well in Salt Lake City. He cannot wait to go back there and just burn it down out there on that tr out there and hope to try to clean sweep the event again. And to try to bring home that win for the overall event championship. And then we have Tim Hall Jr. in Jurassic Attack making his Monster Jam debut this year. He's never driven in Monster Jam before, so you know we can always see what he has in store for us. He's done a lot of stuff on the independent scene, but um, no, we just can't wait to see what he's got to see out here, out here in Monster Jam. He's done a lot of great stuff on that independent circuit, so you know we can't wait to hopefully bring all those cool moves and tricks that he's done there and bring them out here into Monster Jam next year. Next up, here's our schedule for Arena Championship Series West. 
January 3rd, we'll be going out to Salt Lake City, Utah at the Delta Center for a show on Steel Titans 2. January 10th, we'll be in Reno, Nevada at the Reno Sparks Livestock Event Center for a pool table event. January 17th, we're going to be in Tacoma, Washington at the Tacoma Dome on the pool table. January 23rd, we're going to be in Sacramento, California at the Golden One Center for, the, for a Monster Dirt Arena show. Uh, February 7th, we're going to be in Denver, Colorado at the Ball Arena for a Steel Titans 2 show. February 14th, we're going to be in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma at the Paycom Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. Uh, February 15th, we're going to be in Fargo, North Dakota at the Fargo Dome for a pool table show. February 21st, we're going to be in Wichita, Kansas at the Interest Bank Arena for a Steel Titans 2 show. February 28th, we're going to be in Portland, Oregon at the Moda Center. Uh, for a Steel Titans 2 show. March 7th, we're going to be in Fresno, California at the Save Mart Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. March 14th, we're going to be in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the Tingly, Tingly Coliseum for a Monster Dirt Arena show. Um, uh, we're going to have March 24th, we're going to be in Tucson, Arizona at the Tucson Arena. I forgot, I accidentally put Tucson, Arizona twice there for a uh, Monster Dirt Arena event. April 4th, we're going to be in Columbus, Ohio at the Scotchton Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. April 10th, we're going to be in North Charleston, South Carolina at the North Charleston Coliseum for a Monster Dirt Arena show. April 25th, we're going to be in Huntsville, Alabama at the Von Braun Center Props Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. May 9th, we're going to be in Manchester, New Hampshire at the SNHU Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. May 16th, we're going to be in Cincinnati, Ohio at the Heritage Bank Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. And then July 18th through 19th is going to be our 26th Monster Jam World Finals in Salt Lake City at Rice Eccles Stadium. So some things to know out here about this tour out here. You know, we're returning to Salt Lake City out here, Team Throttle Monster's hometown. So they're ready to burn it down there like they've been doing for these past couple of years. Um, you know, we've got a, we got a quite a, we got a four, I believe, still Titan stops on this tour, and we have three pool table stops on this tour, so, you know, definitely out of all the arena tours, definitely we got a wide variety here, definitely got a little bit of wide variety out here at the beginning of the season, as in January, we've got two pool table events, one dirt arena event, and then one still Titans event, so definitely we got a lot of variety between pool table and still Titans during the first two months of the season, and then we go almost all Monster Dirt Arena shows from March till, till May. And something to be in to note about this uh, about this tour with the Monster Dirt Arena. As this year, guys, we are getting a brand new Monster Dirt Arena that we've custom built. It's something we did over the summer and we'll be making its debut next year. Here, and we'll be using it for all the arena events and Monster Dirt Arena events. It's going to be, it's going to have a bigger track. And it's going to be bigger and better than what we had last year. So it is going to be awesome, guys. So please be sure to be ready to check it out. You'll, you've kind of already seen sneak peeks and hints of it if you've looked under the pool table during certain videos. Like for the Monster Jam pool table events or for holiday racing. If you looked under there, you may have seen that arena. As we still do have some stuff, we still got to add some logos in there. As well as put some dirt down in there. And paint the track but it's gonna look great guys and i cannot wait for you all to see it we still do have some work to do on it though throughout december but we cannot wait to have that thing ready for you guys in time by january for this season as it is going to be very awesome and uh arena series west will get to make its debut on that track on january 23rd for sacramento california um uh at the golden one center and then one last thing we got to note here about this event is uh is the amount of stops we do have on the East Coast uh, for the very end of the season. As all those in the Arena West Tour, we do have some stops out here on the East Coast. We're going to do all of our West Coast stops from January through March. Then in April, well in May, we're going to have a bunch of East Coast stops taking place in states like Ohio, South Carolina, Alabama, and New Hampshire. So that's going to be awesome for you East Coast fans to get a chance to see some of these, some all to see all these drivers out here from the west coast as it is going to be awesome and that's the up arena series central now let's move on out here to stadium championship series west as this lineup will feature adam anderson and gravedigger caleb blood and sparkle smash 
Tristan England and JCB Digatron, Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger, Todd LaDuke and Megalodon, Jamie Garner and El Toro Loco, Bryce Kenny and Monster Mutt, Zach Garner and Wildside, Cole Vinard and Black Pearl, Matt Pegley, Rulo and Jester, Nick Pegley, Rulo and Kraken, and Michael Pegley, Rulo and Excalibur. Alright, let's go ahead and go down the list here of this tour. There's a lot to talk about on this tour. First up, we do have Adam Anderson in Gravedigger. On this tour, this is going to be Adam's 20th year driving. It's hard to believe Adam's been driving now for nearly 20 years. As um, That is definitely really hard to believe out here. here and he's ready you know, to tear it up out here in Gravedigger next year. This season was not the season Adam Anderson wanted. But it seems like he's, he kind of had a very strong ending at the end of 2024. Four shows in East Rutherford and Anaheim for the Superstar Challenge were both really great shows for him. So he's hoping to carry that momentum next year into next year's tour. And he's hoping to do well this year, which is really not Adam Anderson's year. He struggled with an injury that he, you know, he just struggled all year on the tour. He just didn't do as well in racing as he wanted to. And, uh, you know, he tried to lay it down in freestyle, but it was definitely hard going up against Ryan Anderson. And the biggest thing of all is that he ended up getting an injury back in late February, which caused him to miss three events on this tour for uh, Arlington, El Paso, and Birmingham. So, you know, Adam Anderson, he's ready to come out here on the Stadium Tour West, and he's home to ready to have some redemption on this tour um, and just burn it down out here and, and try to get a win for all you fans. He did good in East Rutherford in our last event, winning racing in the overall. So he's hoping, so Adam's hoping to have a great consistent season and walk out as the champion. Next up, we've got Kayla Blood in Sparkle Smash. Kayla Blood will be making her, her full-time season debut in Sparkle Smash next year. Sparkle Smash has only done a, a handful of things this year as we made our debut with that truck at the World Finals back in June. Where Caleb Blood would do the Wall of Steel stunt, which went really well and was really awesome. Then in uh, then in June, we end up she ended up making her competition debut in that truck um, in Nashville, Tennessee, where she had a decent performance there. And then she ended up going on out to the Superstar Challenge in October, where the truck would only participate as to do a stunt, as she would do a forward uh, momentum front flip in that show. Oh, and that was definitely really awesome to see. And then um, and then she came back out in Sparkle Smash one last time at the end of the year in in in, uh, in East Rutherford just, last, just this past weekend and did a show oh, behind the wheel there. So, you know, we can't wait to see what Kayla Blood will have in store in for us in Sparkle Smash next year. And let's hope Kayla can just have a really great season next year and um, rep get a chance to represent well this 12,000 pound unicorn. Next up we've got Tristan England and JCB Digatron. We're really excited to see what Tristan has in store for us next year as Tristan England is ready to burn it down out here for all the Monster Jam fans this season. And as uh, you know Tristan and had a really great season this year in JCB Digatron. Now he had a bit of a slow start throughout the first month and a half of the season but by the time minneapolis kicked in he just really started doing well in this truck he laid down many burner freestyle runs especially in miami he where he got the win and got nominated for stadium freestyle of the year although he didn't win it and then he just went on to have a, just a great season behind the wheel of jcb digatron and get second place on stadium tour east last year this is the second stadium tour now he's used to these stadium environments and He's ready to come out here and, and to try to win this state this this series championship. Next up, we've got Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger. Ryan Anderson is really excited for this year. Um, you know, he's he's the defending tour champion out here on this tour. As he ended up just doing, he ended up doing really well. Well, last year on this tour, he burned it down. He did really amazing. He, he just had many just great freestyle runs. On his tour, and he was consistent. He was able to get the series win, as I, we talked about earlier, with no controversy this time around. He won fair and square, and he just burned it down and just had great runs all season long. And he's ready to come out here on Stadium Championship Series West and just do well out here for all of the Monster Jam fans. Next up, we've got Todd Duke and Megalodon. Todd Duke third year in Megalodon. 
you know, last year was a bit of a struggle for him in Megalodon in 2023. But then he came out here in 2024 and he had a bit of a better year in Megalodon than what he had the previous year as he had a new chassis. And uh, he really did well in Megalodon, especially in some of these um, past um, few shows out here towards the uh, towards the end of the in the main first quarter season as he did really well at World Finals nailing just a massive backflip there that should have probably gotten a higher score. And then he ended up uh, and then he ended up doing uh, really well in Atlanta as well as that was one of the last stops on the tour. He did really well there, especially on the Sunday event where he took home the racing and skills competition wins. So, you know, we cannot wait to see what Todd Duke has in store for us next year and we cannot wait for him to go big. Next up, we've got Jamie Garner in El Toro Loco. Jamie Garner making his return to El Toro Loco this year. He had a pretty good year in El Toro Loco this year, so we cannot wait to see what he has in store for us next year, and we just cannot wait to watch him burn it down. Next up, we've got Bryce Kenny in Monster Mutt. This is something really huge out here. You know, Bryce Kenny had a really great season this past year here on Stadium Tour East, as he had, like, many just great moments, especially in... Paxton in Atlanta for the final stops of the year where he just absolutely just burned it down and just had some really awesome moments there and even taking home some wins and you know Bryce you know he's having to switch rides as you know the Great Clip sponsorship is coming to an end and he's moving over to Monster Mutt the truck he originally got his career start in here in Monster Jam and uh, you know it's been a fun ride from over the past eight years driving the Mohawk the Mohawk Warrior truck but is now coming to an end, and he is now going to get the chance to drive Monster Mutt out here on Stadium Tour West. And after his great 2024 season, we cannot wait to see what he has in store for us here in 2025, and we cannot wait to see what kind of action he's going to bring in this Monster Mutt truck. Next up, we've got Zach Garner in a wild side. Zach Garner, you know, he's actually getting a chance to bump up out here and do his first ever Stadium Tour you know, after his great performance this year, it was about time, you know, for him to be added out here onto a stadium tour out here after, you know, his, his make it to the final round at World Finals and his absolute great performance on Arena Series East this year. It was just about time for Zach to move up to that stadium spot, and he is really excited out here. He's ready to burn it down in these stadiums. He's ready to get more stadium experience out here and do more stadium shows, and he is ready to burn it down and go big out here for all the Monster Jam fans. As he's rainy, as he's just going to send it all season long, and I think he's definitely going to be an underdog and a threat out here to the competition. Next up, we got Cole Vinard in Black Pearl. Cole Vinard ready to come out here and have another great season. Last year was a really great year for Cole Vinard, especially in Minneapolis where he brought home the freestyle win after nailing a reverse backflip in freestyle. He's ready to come out here and try to have another just great season out here on this tour. And he's ready to just go big and burn it down. Well, the one unfortunate thing about Cole's season last year was the fact that he did get an injury in Minneapolis. He ended up fracturing a bone in his arm after that complete burner of a run that he had in Minneapolis. He ended up missing, which would cause him to miss out on the entire month of March where he would have to, well, almost, he end up, well, he didn't miss out on the whole month. He was able to compete in Tampa, but he did miss out on competing in Orlando, Miami, and Jacksonville uh, in that month of March out there. So, and he had to have Michael Pagliarulo fill in for him. So, you know, Cole Bernard told him to have a full season out here, and he told him to just do really well. Next up, we got Matt Pagliarulo in Jester. Matt, Matt is out here representing for 10 years of Tom Foolery Motorsports out here next year. And that is going to be um, a very big thing out here for Matt Pagli Rulo. Oh, in 10 years of Tom Foolery Motorsports, 10 years of Jester. As you know, he's going to be having lots of different bodies he may be running throughout the season with the silver body that he's going to be running. So, you know, we're really excited to see how Matt's going to perform. We, you know, he ended up debuting the silver body back at, well, World Finals on a as it as on for a display truck, so you know that was definitely really awesome to see. And now we cannot wait to see it compete full time out here next season, and we just cannot wait to watch watch Matt Pagliarulo burn it down all next year out here on Stadium Championship Series West. He had a great year this year, so we just cannot wait to see what he's gonna do for us next year. Next up, we got Nick Pagliarulo in Kraken. Nick is out here. Nick is out here ready for. 
for um ready he's, he's ready out here to do really well this season and this year is definitely a bit of an interesting year for nick pagliarulo he had a bit of a tough start with efi problems on his truck out here and the fact that he missed three events on the tour as he ended up missing houston uh st louis and indianapolis due to the new child that he welcomed into his family he um back in january so he ended up missing quite a few shows and, uh, you know, it's going to be very unfortunate for Nick, but he was able to make his return in Minneapolis in mid-February, where he had a decent run out there for the rest of the season. It seemed like by Atlanta, he started to have that truck dialed in and figured out. And then, you know, he went and burned it down at World Finals, and then he had quite a busy quarter two competing in a lot of shows in the, in the eastern coast here of the United States. And the most significant of that was Tampa, of florida where nick was able to bring home the win for the overall and free team well, got the freestyle win and the overall event championship win in tampa at amelie arena earlier this year which was really awesome to see out here as uh you know nick is nick you know has been searching for that freestyle and overall win for so long now then he finally got it so it was definitely a very emotional weekend that weekend in tampa when nick brought those wins home Although he wish he could have brought one home in a stadium this year. That is definitely going to be his goal out here for next year. Is to try to get one of those wins in a stadium for next next year. And behind the wheel of Kraken as he's going from blue to purple next year. As he's debuting the purple body. The purple body that we saw debut at World Finals. Will be making a comeback and we'll be seeing it be ran all next year. So it, that's definitely going to be very exciting. And then we've got Michael Pagliarulo and Excalibur. Mike getting his first time stadium, full-time stadium tour this year. His Mike did a, quite a few fill-in shows this year near uh, for uh, on his tour on Stadium Tour East. He filled in for Nick Pagliarulo in, uh, in Houston, St. Louis, Indianapolis, and, and Indianapolis. And then he would fill in for Cole Vinard for Orlando, Miami, and Jacksonville. So Mike did a lot of fill-ins last year, but now he's ready to come out here to compete full-time on a tour. And he's getting to drive Excalibur, having Excalibur making it a full-time season return next year, which is definitely going to be very awesome and very fun to see. We're going to see Excalibur making its return to competition for the first time in nearly 10 years earlier or, uh, earlier this year. Here as he made its debut, it, it, it made its re-debut back in June for Nashville, Tennessee, he, and then he would end up bringing it and using and driving the truck in many arena shows throughout the state of Florida throughout the month of September in cities such as Orlando, Sunrise, and Tampa. He would get many wins, uh, such as the skill in, in those arena shows. He got a donut win in Orlando, show one. He got a uh, Sky Wheelie win. I think it was uh, in Tampa. It was either in Tampa or Sunrise or maybe both. I believe he got a uh, a freestyle win in Sunrise, and uh, he even also he also got a uh, a skills win in Tampa show number three. So it was a very successful quarter two for Michael Pagliarulo, and he's hoping to bring that success next year into the Stadium Tour. Or west of next year. And he's also representing for 40 years of Excalibur. As his truck turns 40, 40 years old next year. So that's going to be interesting out here. And we just cannot wait to see. The Stadium Tour West is very interesting. Has a very interesting lineup. One of the most interesting out of all the tours we have. With Bryce Kenny making his return to Monster Mutt. And then Team Overboard and Team Tom Foolery. Expanding, to having, expanding from having originally having two trucks run on a Stadium Tour. To now having three run on a Stadium Tour. And they're also now going to get to do some more stops on the West Coast, something they don't do very often. Speaking of that, let's take a look at the schedule out here for Stadium Tour West. First up, we're going to be in Anaheim, California. On January 5th, we're going to be in Anaheim, California at Angel Stadium on a, for, for a Steel Titans 2 event. January 19th, we're going to be in St. Louis, Missouri at the Dome at America Center for a pool table show. February 9th, we're going to be in Glendale, Arizona at State Farm Stadium for a Steel Titans 2 show. February 16th, we're going to be in Anaheim, California uh, at um, Angel Stadium um, for a Steel Titans 2 show. Um, February 23rd, we're going to be in Minneapolis, Minnesota at U.S. Bank Stadium for a pool table show. March 16th, we're going to be in El Paso, Texas at the UTEP Sun Bowl for a pool table show. March 22nd, we've got 
Tampa, Florida at Raymond James Stadium for a pool table show. March 23rd, we're going to be in Tampa, Florida at Raymond James Stadium for another pool table show. March 27th, we'll be in Vancouver, B.C. Here in British Columbia at the Pacific Coliseum for a Monster Dirt Arena show. April 3rd, we're going to be in Arlington, Texas at AT&T Stadium for a Steel Titans 2 show. Seattle, Washington, we're going to be in Lumen Field for a pool table show. May 4th, we're going to be in Miami, Florida at Lone Depot Park for a pool table show. May 18th, we're going to be in Inglewood, California at SoFi Stadium for a pool table show. May 26th, we're going to be in Fort Myers, Florida at uh, Captiva Island for a beach show. June 7th, we'll be in Atlanta, Georgia at Atlanta Motor Speedway for a show out on the back porch. And June 8th, we're going to be in Atlanta, Georgia at Atlanta Motor Speedway for another show out there on the porch. And then July 18th through 19th, we're going to be in Salt Lake City, Utah at Rice Eccles Stadium for Monster Jam. World Finals 26. This tour is very interesting as this tour has four different, three different Steel Titans, four Steel Titan stops, two in Anaheim, one in Glendale, and then one in Arlington. So that should be very interesting to watch out here. Lots of pool table events, and we even have a Monster Dirt Arena show that will spread in there as well. But this Monster Dirt Arena show is going to be something very different, something we've never done before as that lineup will actually be 12 trucks, as all 12 trucks will be competing in a Monster Dirt Arena show uh, for that event. So that's something to be interesting, seeing a 12-truck arena show that we're going to be doing on March 27th. And the show will count for points. Other stuff that we have interesting here on this schedule, as we have Seattle, Washington making its return out here for the first time since... Uh, for the first time since uh, uh, since 2019. So, you know, we're really excited to be heading back out here to Lumen Field for a pool table show. I do know ever since when we went there back in 2019, we do have some drivers returning who were in that 2019 show. Well, actually only one, that being Adam Anderson in Gravedigger. So, that's going to be really interesting for Adam. Englewood, California, for its first time in history, will get it, their first ever regular stadium show. For that season, so that's going to be, uh, for this season, that's going to be really interesting to watch in May. We're hoping that Fort Myers show will work out. We've tried to get it to work out these past two years, but sadly it just didn't happen due to stuff like destruction from hurricanes, red tide, job, people with work. So hopefully this year can actually work and it can actually happen. And we can have a show out there to celebrate, um, to celebrate, uh, whatchamacallit, to celebrate, um, uh, Memorial Day. So this is definitely a really interesting tour. A very long tour as well. There are lots of stops out here. Lots of returning stops out here. Stops that we saw being done on the East Coast tours. You know, we also have some shows on the East Coast for this West Coast tour. Shows like Tampa, uh, Miami, and Fort Myers. Fort Myers and Atlanta are all East Coast stops. Also being sprinkled in to the schedule out here for Stadium Tour West. Let's now take a look out here at our... Um, and our third tour, that being Arena Championship Series East. As the lineup will feature Kristen Anderson and Gravedigger, Tony Oaks and Thunder Roris, MJ Solario and El Toro Loco, Michaela Telechka and Megalodon, Blake Granger, Monster Mode Dalmatian, Brandon Telechka and Just Get Her Done 2, Mark Hall and Raminator, and Kurt Kramer in Ramunition. First thing, let's go ahead and take a look and take a deep dive into this lineup. Kristen Anderson making another appearance out here on Arena Series East. And she's hoping to get redemption after last year's performance on Arena Series East. As I believe last year on this tour on Arena Series East, she either finished in 6th or 5th place out here. She did not have the performance she wanted to. So she's hoping to come out here with some redemption this year. And she's hoping to just do well out here and have a bit of a better performance compared to last year. I do know it towards the end of last season on Arena Series East, Kristen Anderson really just started thriving out there on that tour. So... You know, we hope she can do too really well again on this tour, and we hope she can thrive and try to have a better season and have some redemption after last year. Next up, we've got Tony Oaks and Thunder Roars. Tony Oaks had a really great season this year, finishing in second place on Arena Series West, and he also did really well in some of the quarter two shows after the World Finals that he competed in in Orlando, Sunrise, and Tampa. Bring home many wins in competitions like freestyle, timed racing, sky wheelies, skills, 
He probably won everything out there, and he just had a really great time doing some of those bigger arena floors. So he's excited to be out here competing on the East Coast once again. He's ready to burn it down for all you fans. Next up, we got MJ Solorio and El Toro Loco. MJ Solorio also had a really great year this year for his rookie season. He won the Donut of the Year award after his donut from, I believe, either Tacoma or Fargo. I cannot remember. But um, he was able to, you know, bring home a don the Donut of the Year award win. And then he also had some really great moments in quarter two of this year as he did get a chance to compete also in the same shows Tony Oaks did of Orlando, Sunrise, and uh, Tampa, where he would end up bringing home some wins in Orlando, uh, where he brought home some wins for the... Yeah, he, is, he actually brought home his first ever overall event championship win during that weekend on Orlando show too. He brought home his first career overall event championship win, which was really great out here for MJ Solorio. And, you know, we're really excited to hopefully see him get more overalls next year. He also brought him other wins, such as maybe in Sky Wheelies, uh, Donuts, and Freestyle. So, you know, MJ had a really great, strong ending to his season last year, and he's hoping to have a great season out here this year. Next up, we've got Michaela Telechka and Megalodon. Michaela had an interesting season this year. Bit better than last year, but not really what she wanted to. She struggled near the bottom a lot in a lot of these shows. But in her last show of the year back in Tampa, she actually did pretty decent. Having lots of cool moments in that in, in that show. Oh, and, um, and she also brought home a donut win back in Orlando, show number two. So Michaela's really hoping to get this truck dialed in, and she's ready to burn it down out here next season. we got Blake Ranger, Monster Mutt Dalmatian. Um, Blake's definitely had an interesting season this year. He's driven lots of trucks. He's driven Max D. He's also, he drove Max D for quite a few shows. He drove them Max D for Orlando, Jacksonville, the World Finals, San Jose, and Arnhem. And then um, he drove El Toro Loco, or Megalodon was the next truck he drove. He drove Megalodon for Berlin, Munich, and Zurich. And then he drove El Toro Loco for Birmingham, UK. So, you know, Blake Granger's definitely had an interesting season driving lots of trucks. And now he's getting a chance to return to Monster Mutt Dalmatian for the first time since 2018 out here on his tour. He's really excited to make his return turn out here um, on out here in Dalmatian. Max, he sadly retired after the Superstar Challenge. So Blake will no longer be driving that. And he's now moving over to Monster Mutt Dalmatian to get a chance to drive out here in the United States for a full-time season. It'll definitely also be interesting seeing another male driver drive Monster with Dalmatian as we did have a male driver drive Dalmatian earlier on this year being Joe Dennis as a fill-in for Jamie Sullivan. So, you know, we cannot wait to see what Blake Granger will have in store for us out here this year. And we just cannot wait to watch him dominate out here on Arena Series East. We have Brandon Telechka and Just Get Her Done too. Brandon's had a pretty great season this year, nailing his first ever backflipping competition. Although he did have lots of struggles, he did have some good moments and skills in racing um, and in freestyle as well as he laid down lots of good runs. He also had a really great weekend um, weekends in the Arena Florida Arena shows. He did really great in those, bringing home many wins, especially in timed racing. He even brought home some overall wins as well. Laid down quite a few great runs in freestyle and also laid down some great runs in skills in donuts as well. So, you know, we cannot wait to watch Brandon Telechka next year and see what he's got up his sleeves. I think he's going to have a great showing next year. And then we got Mark Hall and Raminator making his return. Mark Hall had a pretty good season last year. He's getting more technical with his skills challenge routine. So we cannot wait to watch, see what he's got for us next year. And Kurt Kramer and Ramunition also making his return next year as um, he's also kind of stepped things up out here in his two-wheel game this year as well. So we cannot wait to watch him further improve out here this year. Next up, let's take a look at the schedule out here for Arena Series East. As January 5th will be in Greenville, South Carolina at the Bond Secures Wellness Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. January 12th, we're going to be in Greensboro, North Carolina at the Greensboro Coliseum for a Steel Titans 2 show. January 19th, we're going to be in Baltimore, Maryland at the CFG Bank Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. January 19th, we're going to be in Washington, D.C. at the Capital One Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. February 13th, we're going to be in Providence, Rhode Island at the Amica Mutual Pavilion 
for a Monster Dirt Arena show. February 16th, we're going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania uh, at the PPG Paints Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. Uh, February 23rd, we're going to be in Allentown, Pennsylvania at the PPL Center for a Monster Dirt Arena. March 16th, we're going to be in Hidalgo, Texas and at the Payne Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. March 16th, we're going to be in Biloxi, Mississippi at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum for a Monster Dirt Arena show. April 2nd, we're going to be in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania at the Mo Mohegan Sun Arena for a Steel Titans 2 show. April 17th, we're going to be in Des Moines, Iowa at the Wells Fargo Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. April 20th, we're going to be in Lincoln, Nebraska at the Pinnacle Bank Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. May 4th, we'll be in Colorado Springs, Colorado at the Broadmoor World Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. May 11th, we're going to be in Napa, Idaho at the Fort Idaho Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. May 10th, we're going to be in Pensacola, Florida at the Pensacola Bay Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. And then July 18th through 19th is going to be the Monster Jam World Finals 26 in Salt Lake City, Utah at Rice Eccles Stadium. Not much really to say out here. We do have some stops leaning out more towards the western coast of the United States towards the latter half of this season here on Arena Series East, such as in Colorado Springs, Nampa, uh, Lincoln, are all going to be stops out there more towards the western coast. It's nice to see Pensacola back out here on the schedule for another show in Florida uh, for this arena tour. And, uh, you know, not really that much else to say. We've got two Steel Titans events on this tour, which, was, which is going to be interesting. And uh, not really that much else to say out here. There are um, a lot of same stops that we visited to last year. So let's go ahead and move on to our next tour. That being Stadium Championship Series East. As the lineup will feature Tyler Meninga and Gravedigger, Cynthia Gauthier and Lucas Stabilizer, Armando Castro and El Toro Loco, Barry Musauer and Zombie, Colt Stevens and Thunder Roris, Camden Murphy and Classroom Crusher, Kevin Crocker and Megalodon, Jim Kohler and Avenger, Chris Kohler and Mayhem, Joe Foley and Axe, Mike Christensen in Vendetta, and Dalton Widener in Jurassic Attack. Lots of definitely cool and interesting stuff we need to point out here on this tour. First up, we have our defending Stadium Tour East champion, Tyler Meninga and Gravedigger out here on this tour as um, Tyler is ready to burn it down. He's ready to go big out here this year. Last year on Stadium Tour East, Tyler just had a great performance, burning it down at all of the shows he went to. Is having great freestyle after great freestyle. And just had a really great consistent performance. And he was able to bring home that tour win. Rightfully deserved. No controversy unlike last year. So, you know, Tyler's hoping to get another win out here this year on Stadium Championship Series East. And we've got Cynthia Gauthier and Lucas Stabilizer making her full-time competition return this year. Last year, you know, this year she sadly just... Didn't do that many shows because she ended up having to take a maternity leave this year during the entirety of first quarter to welcome in her first ever child. So big congratulations to Cynthia and her family and um, for, for, having their, for having her first child. But she would make her return in June for Nashville. Then she did two other shows after that. One in October for Nashville again. And then uh, in November for the end of the year show this past weekend, she competed in East Rutherford. So Cynthia's been getting some seat time in here and there, and she's ready to go next year for a full-time tour. And hopefully she can, you know, get, you know, she needs a few stops to get her feet wet, and then, you know, she's going to be trying to, then she's going to be going really good and strong long after the first couple of stops out here on the tour. And we just cannot wait to watch Cynthia Gauthier burn it down and have a great season next year. we got Armando Castro and El Toro Loco. After Armando Castro's great year this year, year finishing third place on Arena Series uh, East, getting his first ever invite to World Finals, where he did had a pretty decent performance there, and then he ended up competing in two stadium, three stadium shows post World Finals in Nashville, East Rutherford, and in Anaheim for the Superstar Challenge, where in Anaheim he also nailed the moonwalk to pack flip, which was a really crazy move out there, which really blew the fans' minds that night at Angel Stadium. So we cannot wait to watch Armando Castro next year. I think he's gonna really going to get really wild out there on the track for his first stadium tour. He's done quite a few stadium events in the past, so we're excited to see him do another one out here this year. We cannot wait to watch him get wild and get crazy out there on that track, and we hope he can walk away and maybe try to give Tyler Meninga a run for his money for the series championship. Barry Musauer making his return out here to Stadium Tour East. 
this year. There's one stop bar on this tour is really excited for, and um, and uh, we'll see that in just a few moments out here as he's definitely really excited for one of these stops out here on, on this tour. And Barry's excited to be on the eastern coast once again for some shows, and he's and he's re he's just really excited, and he cannot wait for this tour to get started. Next up, we got Colt Stevens and Thunder Roars getting a chance to also do some more shows out here on the eastern coast. The Thunder, his, him and Thunder Roars have been mainly doing west coast shows over these past couple of years, so it's nice to see him get a chance to get to do some shows out here on the east uh, out here on the east coast. Really, the only East Coast shows to Colt has really done have been has been uh, mainly Indianapolis last year, and then this year he did Birmingham and uh, at Birmingham, Atlanta, and Madeira Beach. So he's really excited to get a chance to do some more, a lot more stops out here on the East Coast out here this year. Next up, we got Camden Murphy and Classroom Crusher. Classroom Crusher is going to be a brand new truck that Camden Murphy is going to be rocking next year and we cannot wait to watch him make his debut with that truck um uh coming up very soon and um it's definitely gonna be really cool and really interesting we cannot wait to see what that truck is going to look like out here as it's gonna be a very cool truck and um we just cannot wait to see camden murphy drive in we cannot wait to see what he's got in store for us as bakugan dragonoid will be going away and retiring as it sadly retired after superstar challenge and cam or actually no it retired after nashville tennessee He's, and now Camden, Camden's going to have a new ride for next year. And we cannot wait to watch watch him just burn it down next year inside of this truck. Next up, we got Kevin Crocker and Megalodon. Corey Rummel sadly leaving Team Scream to focus more on his um, business that he's running. Running um, all, um, offside when he's not doing Moss Trucks. He's doing some more focus on that. So he's left Team Scream. And Kevin Crocker will take his place. Kevin Crocker making his return for the first time since 2021, back when he drove El Toro Loco for Team Scream. And now he's going to get to drive another Feld identity, that being Megalodon. Next up, we've got Jim Kohler and Avenger ready to come out here and making have another great season. Jim has a, had a lot of great performances this year, especially in Arlington, where he ended up winning the overall event championship win. And he's just ready to have another great season now here. And fin try to finish high in the point standings. Next up, we've got Chris Kohler in Mayhem. Chris is ready to rock it out out here in Mayhem next year. You know, he cannot wait, wait to rock to rock out this truck. And he just cannot wait to burn it down. I right, hear this is a new truck for a new identity for Team Scream. Something he's been working on for a long time. And he's ready to rock it. He's rocked many identities this year. This year, Chris got to drive Monster Mud during the majority of first quarter and had some great performances in it. His biggest highlight, though, is definitely running uh, Northern Nightmare back in Detroit, where he ended up making it all the way to semifinals in racing and would get the win in the uh, in the over in the freestyle competition in Northern Nightmare when we made and had Northern Nightmare make its competition return for the first time since 2019. As that was definitely really cool for Chris Kohler. And he just absolutely rocked it out in Northern Nightmare. And then he even got to do two, sh two shows in Brutus this year for Nashville and East Rutherford. So, you know, we cannot wait to watch um, Chris Kohler just burn it down out here here this year here in Mayhem. We just cannot wait to see what that truck is going to look like as I think it's definitely going to be really cool. Next up, we got Joe Foley making his return to Axe. Joe Foley burned it down and rocked it all year long in El Toro Loco. Taking home a lot of racing competition wins. I believe he took home two overall event championships in Glendale and in Atlanta. And he just and he had just many just awesome moments behind the wheel of of this truck of, of, of El Toro Loco. He even had a burner of a freestyle run back at Madeira Beach for the finale of Stadium Tour East, where people think he probably should have won over Caleb Blood. So you know, um, you know, uh, Joe Foley, he's ready to burn it down out here for all the Monster Jam fans out here on the Stadium Tour East. He's back in his truck that he belongs in, that being Axe. He made his return to Axe earlier this year, back in July for Orlando for the end of summer show. Then he also drove the truck in East Rutherford this past weekend. And now he's ready to bring it out once again this year, and he's ready to do well. Mike Christensen in Vendetta. Mike had a bit of a struggle of a season this year, not getting the performance he really wanted to. So he's hoping to come out here this year and just have a great season for all the Monster Jam fans. 
and um, try to finish higher in the points and just have a really awesome season. Next up, we've got Dalton Widener and Jurassic Attack. Dalton Widener had a pretty decent performance this year on Arena Series West, getting a chance to do some of those bigger arena floors, and even laying down a really great freestyle run back in Fargo, North Dakota. That almost got him the Arena Freestyle win of the year. And so he's really excited to come out here and be on this bigger stadium floor, and he's ready to, to just burn it down out here on this large stadium floor, and um, he's ready to and he's ready to just do really well out here for all the fans out here. And uh, you know he can just, he just cannot wait to watch we just cannot wait to watch him just burn it down behind the wheel of Jurassic Attack this year on this large stadium floor. As he is ready for it, and we just cannot wait to watch him do really well. Next up, here's our schedule eye for Arena Series, for Stadium Championship Series East. The line of the schedule consists of January 4th in uh, San Diego, California at Snapdragon Stadium for a pool table show. January 11th in San Diego, California at Snapdragon Stadium for a pool table show. January 18th, they're going to be in Anaheim, California at Angel Stadium for a Steel Titans 2 show. February 8th, we're in Houston, Texas at NRG Stadium for a pool table show. February 22nd, we're going to be in Detroit, Michigan at Ford Field for a Steel Titans 2 show. March 15th, we're going to be in Indianapolis, Indiana at Luke Soil Stadium for a Steel Titans 2 show. March 17th, we're going to be in Orlando, Florida at Camping World Stadium for a pool table show. April 5th, we're going to be in New Orleans, Louisiana at the Caesar Superdome for a pool table show. Uh, April 20th, we're going to be in Jacksonville, Florida at the Everbank Stadium for a pool table show. Uh, April 21st, we're going to be in Birmingham, Alabama at Protective Stadium for a pool table show. April 26th, we're going to be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Lincoln Financial Field for a pool table show. A uh, April 27th, we're going to be in Foxborough, Massachusetts at Gillette Stadium for a pool table show. May 3rd, we're going to be in East, Ruther East, Ruther East Rutherford, New Jersey at MetLife Stadium for a pool table show. May 10th, we're going to be in San Antonio, Texas at the Alamo Dome. For a pool table show. May 11th, we're going to be in Houston, Texas at NRG Stadium for a pool table show. May 27th, we'll be at Fort Myers, Florida for Captiva Island for a beach show. Then May 20, then July 16th through 19th is going to be Moss Jam World Finals 26 in Salt Lake City, Utah at Rice Eccles Stadium. So th some things really to note here about this tour and the schedule. And there are some definitely some things to note out here. We got a lot of stops returning from last year. East Rutherford makes its return to being a part of the Point Series for the first time since 2023. We have Birmingham, Alabama making its return yet again. We have a few stops, a lot of pool table shows out here on this tour. As we only have, a, we don't have a, as much of a variety of shows as what we do have on Stadium Tour West. The Stadium Tour West, we have shows on the porch, shows on the beach, the pool table, the Monster Dirt Arena. Still Titans too, so it has a lot of variety, but mainly here... We've got just a lot of pool table shows with one beach show in there, then three Still Titans 2 shows in there as well for Anaheim, Detroit, and Indianapolis. So those should be interesting and fun to watch. A lot of gaps in between shows from uh, January through March, and then, you know, uh, April is where things really start cranking up for the tour, and, um, you know, we start having lots of stops. New Orleans is definitely a stop we're definitely looking forward to. This is our first time in New Orleans since 2019, so we're very excited to make its return there. Some of the drivers that are competing here, here on this tour will be making their... We're, we're actually at the 2019 uh, New Orleans show, mainly being Jim Kohler and Avenger, as he was a part of that lineup. Uh, is there anybody else on this lineup? Uh, no, it's just Jim Kohler. So Jim Kohler is really excited for that show, and uh, should be a good one out there on April 5th, and... We're really excited for this tour to commence out here. As, um, I think it's going to be a really great tour out here, and we are really excited for it. Also, something to take note of is Madeira Beach and Al Lopez are not scheduled for any of these stadium tours next year. As um, some of these beach shows, we already do have two beach shows planned in May. There's always a chance Madeira Beach could make its return for possibly a makeup stop if for some reason this Fort Myers show doesn't work again. But we're thinking there's a pretty high chance we should be able to get it to work this year. This last this year we couldn't get it to work because of jobs and the fact that this trip was going to take place after World Finals, so we couldn't do the shows there. Then last year, due to a hurricane and destruction, we could not get the chance to do the show. So you know we're hoping this will work out for this year here um, at Fort Myers. 
Myers for the show. And then Al Lopez, we just decided to not um, sing that. Since we already have two beach shows, that's probably why we're not going to do Madeira Beach yet again. As some of these outdoor shows, they are definitely a lot of work, and they're very um, straining on you, and they're very hard to do. Um, and so we just decided to cut them, and they're just very hard to make. Um, as far as video wise, we already have two beach shows. We're deciding to cut that one out. Then Al Lopez has just kind of been a disaster. It was not, well, not a disaster, but it's kind of been hard over the past three years doing the shows. As I'm always somehow hurting myself whenever I do these shows. In 2022, when I did the show, I got lots of mosquito and ant bites. Last year, due to the hot sand, I accidentally cut my knee open last year in 2023. Then this year in 2024, I got overheated. So. You know, we're just deciding to just cut Al Lopez out of the out of the picture. And plus, there's too much grass yet again in that area, in that spot where we like to do the event at. So we're just deciding to just to cut the just to cut the show out altogether this year and not put ourselves through the stress of trying to do it. And um, now it is time to look at our final tour, Arena Championship Series Central, which will feature the lineup of Matt Cody and Gravedigger, Fernando Martinez and El Toro Loco. Jamie Sullivan and Sparkle Smash, Angelina Knock and Megalodon, John Zimmer Sr. and Zombie, John Zimmer Jr. and Terminal Velocity, Triton Robbins and Crazy Train, and Montana Robbins and Plain Crazy. First up, we got Matt Cody and Gravedigger, our defending Arena Series West Champion, and our defending World Freestyle Champion is back on this tour as, um, as, um, you know, he's ready to just burn it down, and he is ready to have a great season out here. And to prove that his World Finals Championship and his Arena Series West win from last year were no fluke. So he's ready to just come out here and have a burner and just have a and have a burner of a season. Just be go big and be consistent all year long. long. And he's someone to try to walk away with this Series Championship this year. here on Arena Championship Series Central as he's ready to go big out here for all the Monster Jam fans out here on this tour as he's ready First time full time on a United States tour for the first time in a long time, and so he is really excited. We just cannot wait to watch him burn it down. Next up, we got Fernando Martinez and El Toro Loco out here for a second uh, full time season out here, and we cannot wait to see what Fernando Martinez is going to have in store for us out here on Arena Series Central. Fernando did really well on this tour last year, finishing very high in the point standings, so we cannot wait to watch to see what he's going to do out here this year as we cannot wait to watch him burn it down and just do well out here on the store and maybe trying to walk away with a series championship next up we got jamie sullivan and sparkle smash jamie sullivan these past two years has been behind the wheel of monster mutt dalmatian now she's making the shift over here to drive for sparkle smash and team sparkle smash out here as we can always see what jamie sullivan is gonna have up her sleeve and we cannot wait to watch her cook out here on arena series central you know, last year on Arena Series Central, Jamie did not have the year she wanted to, as she ended up, uh, she ended up having some struggles. She got injured back at New Work, and, and caused her to miss quite a few stops on the tour for, uh, Belmont Park and, uh, and Pittsburgh, which definitely, def which definitely hurt her in points as she was up there with Weston Anderson, and during that first month of the season, it was really close between her and Weston. And then after the injury, Weston just sort of ran away with the tour. So Jamie Sullivan's ready to come out here and go big this year in Sparkle Smash. And she's hoping that she does not get injured this year compared to last year. And we got Angelina Knock back in Megalodon. Angelina Knock sent it all season long last year on Arena Series East. She's going big out here, showing why she's like a former, like a, a, a stunt, a st uh, like some sort of a stunt person. Thing that she used to do back before she drove for Monster Jam. And as, uh, you know, she's proving why she kind of did that stuff. She just likes to go big. And she was extending it all season long on that tour. And we cannot wait to watch Angelina just go big. And yet again out here on Arena Series Central. And see her hopefully bring home some wins. And maybe finish high on the season standings. Or maybe even, uh, you know, finish high, finish high in the points. Or maybe even win the tour. Next up we got John Zimmer Sr. and Zombie. John Zimmer Sr., you know, made his return to Monster Jam um, uh, this year in Uproar in Nashville. But now he's on this Uproar chassis for Sendit Motorsports. He's going to get a chance to run Zombie on that chassis, which is definitely going to be very interesting to watch as we cannot wait to see it, as we cannot wait to watch that. 
John Zimmer Jr. will be back behind the wheel of Terminal Velocity. Um, sadly, they didn't have trucks ready to get to go for this season to try to compete on a tour this year. So, um, you know, sadly, so he had the All-Star Moss Truck Tour this year, which he ended up getting the win, and he just burned it down just doing so many big outdoor shows for the independent shows. She, he burned it down and just did a lot of great things and on those independent shows they competed in. And he really burned it down, and he made his Moss Gym return back in Nashville earlier this year. So we cannot wait to watch him just to burn it down this year in Terminal Velocity. We cannot wait to watch him go big and hopefully try to walk away with that series championship. Next up, we got Triton Robbins and Crazy Train. Crazy Train making his return to Moss Gym for the first time since 2017. Out here, Triton Robbins behind the wheel. Triton Robbins also a former tour champion on the All-Star Monster Truck Tour. So we cannot wait to watch him go out there and burn it down out here this year on Arena Championship Series Central. Well, and uh, we th I think he's going to definitely do really well. He's, he's He has uh, he has some pretty good two-wheel skill moves out here that we cannot wait to watch. Then Montana Robbins and playing, playing crazy. We cannot wait to watch him make his Monster Jam debut out here as we hope he does really well out here as he's ready to just go big for all the Monster Jam fans out here in his rookie season. We cannot wait to see what he has in store for us, and um, let's hope he can just burn it down and go big for all the Monster Jam fans, and maybe even try to get himself a um, get, finish himself, get himself a really high placing on this tour, and maybe even try to walk away with this tour championship. Next up, here's our schedule out here for Arena Championship Series Central. January 4th, we're going to be in Nashville, Tennessee, at the Bridgestone Arena in the for the for a Monster Dirt Arena show. January 11th, we're going to be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the Pfizer Forum for a Monster Dirt Arena show. January 20th, we're going to be in New York, New Jersey at the Prudential Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. February 8th, we're going to be in Belmont Park, New York um, for a Monster Dirt Arena show. I forgot to put the venue there, my fault. Um, I think it's the UBS Arena. That is what is there. That's the arena that is in Belmont Park. February 9th, we're going to be in Brooklyn, New York at the Barclays Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. February 15th, we're going to be in Worcester, Massachusetts at the DCU Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. February 22nd, we're going to be in Little Rock, Arkansas at the Simmons Bank Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. March 6th, we're going to be in Rosemont, Illinois at the Allstate Arena for a Monster Dirt Arena show. March 15th, we're going to be in Toledo, Ohio at the Huntington Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. March 17th, we're going to be in Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Van Andel Arena for another Monster Dirt Arena show. March 25th, we're going to be in Green Bay, Wisconsin at the Wretch Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. April 1st, we're going to be in Hartford, Connecticut at the XL Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. April 16th, we're going to be in Hampton, Virginia at the Hampton Coliseum for a Monster Dirt Arena show. May 3rd, we're going to be in South Haven, Mississippi at the Landers Center for a Monster Dirt Arena show. May 17th, we're going to be in Lexington, Kentucky at the, for a, a Monster Dirt Arena show. And then July 18th through 19th, we're going to be in Monster Jam World Finals 26 at Salt Lake City, Utah at Rice Eccles Stadium. Alright, some big things to note about this tour. Mainly the, for the fact that this tour is the least variety of what we're going to be doing with the amount of different show formats that we have. As this one is going to be an all-Monster Dirt Arena show out here this year, which is definitely going to be very interesting. We cannot wait to watch all these Monster Dirt Arena shows out here. This year for this tour, and it's, as it is definitely going to be very interesting out here. As far as stops go, we do have a lot of good stops out here. We do have a lot of returning stops from the Arena Series Central last year, making its return to this year's schedule, such as Nashville, Milwaukee, Newark, Belmont Park, um, Worc Worcester, Little Rock, Rosemont, Toledo, Grand Rapids, and South Haven all making their return. We do have some stops that were for not that were originally going to be um, that we did not see last year. You know, such as Hartford and Hampton make their return to the schedule. Green Bay moves from being a show on Arena Championship Series West last year to being back on Arena Series Central this year. And then we do have two brand new arenas for this year that we have not been to before, or some of them we haven't visited in quite some time. Those being Brooklyn, New York, and Lexington, Kentucky. We're really excited for those shows. I think they are going to be awesome shows out here for you fans. And uh, we just cannot wait to watch those shows. Those are definitely going to be very great shows out here for this tour. 
And that's all that we have to say about the schedule. Now let's take a look out here at Monster Jam World Finals 26 here in Salt Lake City, Utah. From July 18th through 19th of 2025. This is very interesting as for the first time since, 28, since 2022. We are making the World Finals a two-day event. and But instead of having it being a Saturday-Sunday event like how we had it from 2020 through 2022. It is now going to be a Friday-Saturday event. Which is kind of like what we had from 2019 through 2020, um, from that we had uh, back in uh, 2019. So, this is definitely going to be very interesting. July 18th through 19th, 2025 will be the Monster Jam World Finals 26 here in Salt Lake City, Utah at Rice Eccles Stadium. For the first time ever, we're heading out to Salt Lake City. We announced this back at the press conference back in... Um, Back in June for Monster Jam World Finals 25, and we've even been having ads for it and all of our trackside playlist ever since. Uh, ever since. Uh, uh, ever since after all the shows post World Finals, so we cannot wait for this event and for this tour out here in July. I as it is definitely gonna be very fun out here for this event for our 26th annual Monster Jam World Finals. It's going to be a really big weekend, with also possibly with the return of not only of a 28-truck lineup, but possibly we are adding four, as we're having four competitions during that weekend instead of just two, as we are bringing out the Skills in High Jump Championship to be done out here this year, as that's going to be very awesome. We cannot wait to watch that out here to get see two, two brand new competitions out here for the Monster Jam more finals. It's going to be interesting thing out here, and for the first time ever, we're expanding to four competitions. It's going to be very awesome and very exciting, and we just cannot wait for it out here, here, and we cannot wait for next year's. Next year's going to be a good year out here for Monster Jam, and we hope to make it even bigger than what we did this this year here in 2024. And that's going to be the end of our video and our schedule out here. Now, something you have to know is the schedule is not set in stone. There's probably a great chance that possibly due to homework and illnesses and jobs, like the Fort Myers shows may get shifted around, and, you know, due to jobs and uh, school and possible illnesses that could happen next year and with colds that we seem to always catch, um, there's a great chance that the schedule will be shifted around quite a bit next year. And we'll definitely be seeing some of the stops, you know, not... Now, you know, not happening on the exact date. They may be shifted around a little bit. So, you know, the schedule is not set in stone. Um, but this is what we'd like to hope we can see out here for next year. We hope we can try and make it go as perfect and as smoothly as possible. But, but um, you know, there definitely be problems with it out here. But, you know, we'll definitely find our way to get all these shows that we have announced in. It's a big schedule next year. Lots of shows. Um, you know, all these stores are seeming to be pretty long next year. But... Lots of the stops are more spread out, and um, so that's definitely going to be interesting, something to take note of, and that's probably going to be it for today's video. We cannot wait for this 2025 season. Again, thank you all for the support for the during this 2024 season, and we cannot wait for the 2025 Monster Jam season, and um, you know, that's probably going to be it, and be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you guys can be notified for when more Monster Jam action from the 2025 season comes out. All right, bye-bye, everybody. Have a God-blessed day, and we'll see you all soon for some more Monster Jam action.